Wiring is one of those areas that a lot of people put off, ignore, or simply hate doing when it comes to modifying cars. There's no doubt that wiring problems are responsible for a large part of the problems we see with poor running, poor tunability, and general reliability issues. Yet approached correctly, it's actually pretty simple for an average enthusiast to do a great job of wiring an ECU without spending a fortune in specialist tools. I'm Andre from the High Performance Academy and you're watching the third part of our Project Panhard series detailing the planning, wiring, configuration and tuning of a Toyota 86 that's been fitted with a 1UZFE VVTi Toyota V8 engine. In the past two instalments we've covered the planning and parts installation and if you've missed those you can check them out at hpacademy.com forward slash blog. In this video you're going to learn how we approach building the wiring harness and what products we chose to use. Thanks in part to social media, the term milspec is one we hear a lot, yet it's also often misused and misunderstood. This term has unsurprisingly been passed down from the military, where military specifications were used to achieve standardisation and design objectives. Since reliability and lightweight are design objectives shared with the motorsport industry, these military specifications have made their way into our industry too. That's a brief history of the term mil-spec, however it's not essential for every project you're working on to use expensive Autosport connectors to achieve a reliable and effective solution. The products we choose to use, as well as the techniques we employ, need to be selected based on the budget for the job, and this needs to be matched with how the car will be used. For example, the sort of wiring harness that's suitable for our project Panhard here wouldn't necessarily be the sort of solution we'd choose for professional motorsport use. At the same time, the harness we're creating will offer long-term reliability, a professional look, and easy serviceability in our installation. Let's start by discussing the products we're using, and the actual wire is one of the most important components. Our entire harness is constructed with 20 gauge Raychem Spec 55 wire, which is a true mil-spec wire. One of the most obvious differences between a mil-spec wire and the normal automotive wire used by OE manufacturers is its size. For a given current handling capacity, mil-spec wire is much smaller in diameter, and this is primarily due to the much thinner and tougher insulation it uses. The actual conductor strands are also either tin-plated or silver-plated, which offers superior corrosion protection compared to bare copper wire. A mil-spec wire offers superior heat protection with a temperature range between minus 65 and 200 degrees centigrade. Just as importantly for motorsport use, the thin insulation reduces the size and weight of the wiring harness. In our last video, I mentioned that we're going to construct our harness from the factory bulkhead connector. This gave us a nice, cost-effective solution, but added a little complexity because we couldn't source new terminals for this plug. We chose to crimp our harness to the existing wire stubs using barrel crimps protected with heat shrink. This is a good time to discuss the techniques for joining or terminating wires in order to achieve good reliability. Many people mistakenly believe that solder is the best way to form a reliable connection. A soldered joint actually has some serious drawbacks that can cause long-term reliability problems. While the actual soldered joint may be sound and reliable, we end up with a brittle junction where the solder joint finishes. When subjected to movement or vibration, often the solder joint will fail at the edges. This is why you'll almost never see solder used in a professional wiring harness. Crimping, on the other hand, relies on mechanical force to join the wires together. Getting a good result with this technique does require the correct crimp tool for the terminal being used. However, when done correctly, the crimp will actually be stronger than the parent wire. Before cutting any wires, we'd already created a wiring spreadsheet describing what wires are required, which terminal they're connected to, and how long they needed to be. 
The first step of construction is to cut the required wires and crimp them to our bulkhead connector. While most of the inputs and outputs to the ECU can be pinned out using normal mil-spec wire, we're using a shielded cable for critical inputs such as the engine speed and position inputs. The engine bay is a very electrically noisy environment and using shielded cable can help eliminate the chance of this electrical noise affecting the signal the ECU sees. These cables use a shield that surrounds the inner signal wires and the shield picks up any electrical interference and drains it to ground, preventing it reaching the signal wires. Once we've cut the wires and crimped them, we can begin laying out the harness. The technique we're using is called concentric twisting, where the harness is built up in twisted layers around a central core. Each layer of wires is twisted in the opposite direction to the layer beneath, and as we move up the layers, the number of wires increases by six. This technique is time consuming and requires a lot of planning to make the transitions and junctions in the harness easy to manage. The reason we concentric twist the harness is that it creates a harness with a very small cross-sectional area and also provides exceptional flexibility to the finished harness. To protect the completed harness, we're using Raychem DR25, which is a heat shrink tubing that offers great flexibility and abrasion resistance. Sealing the junctions in the harness is best done with moulded boots sealed with epoxy for a complete weather-tight finish. However, this is also an expensive process when we have a lot of transitions to seal. In our harness, we're using another type of heat shrink tubing called SCL. This is a semi-rigid glued heat shrink that helps environmentally seal the transition and the semi-rigid finish provides strain relief for the wires beneath. Before applying this product, we wrap the transition in Kapton tape, which is a very thin tape which is able to handle high temperatures. Wrapping the underlying wires with caps on before shrinking SCL or a moulded boot onto them makes it easier to perform work on the harness later if required. During construction, we perform a number of test fits on the engine to ensure everything's the correct length. It's always easier to measure twice and cut once as it's very difficult with this sort of harness construction to fix a mistake. The last step before terminating the harness to the individual connectors is to add labels so we know where each connector goes. We use a yellow heat shrink tube that's printed using a 3M thermal label printer. Once printed, cut and shrunk in place, we then add a piece of clear heat shrink over the label to protect it. The final step is terminating the harness to the connectors. Here we're using a mixture of new connectors where possible along with reusing some of the existing connector bodies that were difficult to source. In this case, we're only reusing the body of the connector and repinning them with new terminals. It can be challenging with some manufacturers to find brand new connectors and terminals, so often this will affect the techniques you can use. If you're reusing the existing connectors, it pays to examine them carefully, as often they will have become brittle from heat and may crack or break, rendering them useless. We struck this issue with the coil connectors that we had originally planned to reuse. With the final connector crimped and installed, we finally have a complete harness that's ready for installation and testing. In this video, you've learnt some of the techniques that can be used in creating a tough wiring harness that will offer great reliability and a long service life, all while looking great. I've covered a few of the products we've used to create this harness and why we've chosen them. This definitely isn't a harness you're likely to find in the F1 paddock, however as I said at the start it's important to match the products and techniques used to the application and budget. In our next video we'll be ready to configure the MoTeC ECU to suit our 1UZFE VVTi engine and we'll finally be able to hear this thing roar before it hits the dyno to see what it makes. So make sure you tune in for our next instalment.